Hi, today's topic is very disturbing. Most of those who live in the first world countries have no idea what goes on in the rest of the world. Today we're talking about epidemics, contagious diseases that made humanity suffer for thousands of years. Consequences of these epidemics are so terrible that they make both first and second world war outcomes seem non-essential. Malaria Malaria is a mosquito-borne illness. When a mosquito bites, it transmits the parasites contained in their saliva. Later, microbes move to the liver where they grow and reproduce inside red blood cells, causing their destruction. Every year, about 3 million people die from this horrific disease. Typically, malaria exists around the equator, and 85 to 90 percent times it happens in southern Africa. Despite the fact that there's no vaccine against malaria, the global incidence of disease resulting mortality have declined in recent years. The list of famous people that died from this illness is endless. Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, Christopher Columbus, Michelangelo, Augustine of Hippo, at least five popes, and many more. Black Death perhaps one of the most terrible pandemics in history. Caused by a plague disease, it took lives of over half of Europe's population. It also was present in some parts of China and India. It created a series of social and economic overturns that had deep effect on the course of European history. It made perish entire cities. Over the course of 20 years, the Black Death killed over 60 million people. It showed how weak and decadent the Europe was back in those times. The disease was most likely carried by rat fleas that lived on the back of rats that were common on cargo ships back in the days. The Black Plague left a terrible mark on the world, changing its people and history forever. Spanish Flu Occurred in the beginning of the 20th century, Spanish Flu was the biggest flu pandemic in history. Being one of the deadliest disasters of all times, it seriously decreased life expectancy by taking lives of over a hundred million people. Yes, you heard it right, it was 5% of the world's population back then. It happened in 1980, when the First World War was just about to end. You may be wondering how this flu was different from the usual flu. It wasn't an ordinary disease, it had a virus subtype called H1N1. Scientists believe that the virus originated from birds and was transmitted to humans in the western part of the US not long before the outbreak. The mass provision in military transportation allowed for a quick spread among various parts of the world. It was called Spanish flu because it took over 8 million Spanish lives. Now let me tell you a little bit about this disease. When an infected person coughs, over half a million virus particles are spread to those standing close. The virus contains hemagglutinin. It's what caused the red blood cells to clump and binds the virus to the infected cell. It happens over and over again, without a single chance of stopping it. The most horrible part begins when the process results in a rapid lung tissue destruction. It means that lungs are being filled with liquid, and the infected dies of the bloodshed. Thank god the virus isn't active anymore. The plague of Justinian happened a long time ago. Until this day, it stays one of the most horrible pandemic cases in the human history. It was named after the Eastern Roman Emperor Justinian I. The virus took over most of the civilized world. It was at its peak from 1541 till 1542, when every day about 5,000 people were dying. Those were huge numbers back then. There were days when the number of deaths doubled. Overall, almost 100 million people died. Over 40% of Constantinople population perished. In Europe, over 25 million people died. Finally, the world's worst infection disease known to man. It's the smallpox. Not so long ago, it was widely spread all over the world. When Europeans brought it to Americas, Natives weren't ready for the virus, and that resulted in the death of about 90% of Native Americans. 
When disease reached its peak in Europe, it was killing over 1,500,000 people every year. What seemed peculiar is that cavalry seemed to be affected a lot less often than the infantry. The milkmaids were also very resistant. The English physician Edward Jenner noticed that having recovered from cowpox makes people more resistant to the natural smallpox. However, during the 20th century, the virus took lives of over 500 million people. That's horrifying. Remember to press the like button, guys. Not for the smallpox's sake, of course, but in the name of the successful vaccine.